In addition to that, the, the downtown revitalization of the Waterfront Integration Master Plan for 2013 identified uh, some key component areas, and, and that was what came up with the guiding principles for the this re revitalization. Uh, so, uh, so, I mean, that, that identified the work on the back of the street as the top of the town civic precinct, drawing on the, the uh, library and the town hall and the planned town square project in that area. Um, and then further down the street is identified as the downtown core revitalization area. The next, come up the next slide. So the, the cross section shown here on the map is, is what's been implemented in the phase one Echo Street project that's been constructed uh, last year. And the same cross section is going to be carried forward for phase two. So that includes sidewalks on both sides of the street, um, repurposing the angled parking to provide space for cycle tracks and parallel parking on that side of the street, one travel lane in each direction, same as existing, and a turning lane in the centre of the street. Um, on the right of the screen there, just a, a, a reminder of the Town Hall Campus Project, which, um, this is a last plan that the town has had drawn up, just highlighting that the intention ultimately is to close down the street that space is that the park area. Next slide. So our starting point for the detailed design of the in particular of the North End of Beckman Street was this redevelopment plan that had been drawn up previously and includes some uh, notable changes to the um, Beckman Street and Elmsley Street intersection. In particular, removing the free flowing right turn lane from Elmsley down into Beckwith. Um, if we can go to the next slide, then we'll get into the actual design. So, we have taken all of our background uh, and previous work and um, carried out the necessary surveys and engineering to prepare detailed design. The layout that you see here covers the phase two area from Elmsley Street on the left side of the page to Russell on the right side of the page. It's, it's a continuation of the phase one designs, the same cross section, um, just you adjusted where appropriate to, to suit the specific local conditions of this part of the street. You'll see it. Elmsley Street, we, we are reflecting that previous design um, or that previous proposal to remove the free flowing right turn lane. <clears throat> and, um, and we'll get into that in more detail on the next page. Just to summarize a few other components of the project um, and, and some of the background to this. So, one of the one of the major objectives of the project is to create a pedestrian and cyclist friendly main street, while of course still uh, still allowing for traffic flow and in in particular the heavy truck traffic that uses this route. Um, so that's that's reflected in the in the geometry at um, at Armsley Street. Um, the, the project also includes replacement of all the underground infrastructure, the storm and sanitary sewers and water mains. So a, a key issue that I think we're here to discuss this evening is the, the Elmsley Street intersection. If we can have the next slide, we'll get into some detail on that. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, let's go with this slide. So the proposed option is option two, which is to remove the free flow right turn lane as you saw in the, the, um, the drawing that was just presented. 
the reasons for, for removing this free flowing right turn lane are to create a more pedestrian and cycling friendly environment. It, simply put, the um, single stage crosswalks controlled by traffic signals are safer for pedestrians, particularly for pedestrians uh, with accessibility needs who might need some extra time crossing the street or um, or maybe visually impaired and, and um, may, may find it more challenging to navigate a, a traffic island. Removing the free flow lane promotes traffic calming so it, the intention is to slow traffic as it enters the downtown core and highlight that this is a, a um, this is a, a pedestrian and a pedestrian focused street and um, traffic should be, you know, the change of the narrowing of the street and so on will um, promote that, that slowing of traffic and increased awareness from drivers. The design also creates some boulevard space, which could potentially be repurposed for a gateway feature, whether that's landscaping or um, gateway signage. The, we've at, at the request of council and, and town staff, we've carried out some detailed traffic analysis modeling of, of the changes. Because we're proposing to still have a, a, a dedicated right turn lane, there's no perceptible increase in expected delays for drivers, even at peak traffic times. Uh, this is a, a, um, provided that a right turn on red is permitted, and, and that's the proposed approach, is that right turn on red would be permitted. This is for traffic coming from Elmsley eastbound to Beckwith southbound. There's no changes to the other legs of the intersection. Um, the alternative that um, is not proposed, but, but is naturally the alternative because it's the existing condition, would be re retaining that free flow right turn lane Obviously, it does provide a smoother turn for drivers and trucks, um, and it, it retains the current configuration, which potentially could, you know, be be um, reduce any potential confusion with changes. But it is it is inherently less safe for pedestrians, and less safe for cyclists, in particular cyclists who need to cross that free flow right turn lane. So that's cyclists who are heading eastbound on Elmsley or. Um, southbound on Beckwith and because um, the some of the key driving factors for the project are creating a, a pedestrian focused downtown uh, retaining the free flow right turn lane is not recommended and an option two is recommended so the next slide shows that in more detail so this slide shows the the specific layout that's proposed here. So this is a signalized intersection. Um, there is, as you see, a dedicated right turn lane for traffic heading east on Elmsley, turning into Beckwith. So although they no longer have the, the free flow lane, um, any traffic waiting to turn right will not obstruct through traffic. The, the arrangements for through traffic are the same as, as the present conditions. Um, we can we can discuss more after the presentation and answer any questions. Um, I'll note uh, if we go to the next slide. Just this slide uh, verifies that the the design of this corner has been has taken into account a, um, a, a WB20 design vehicle, which is a tractor semi-trailer with a standard 53-foot trailer, so the, the largest vehicles that would typically be using this route. So th those type of vehicles can still negotiate this turn without um, encroaching onto any other lanes. Um, and one other issue that was raised at Council, if we go to the next slide, was some concerns about the sight lines for vehicles making that right turn on red. Um, so the, the the concern really was that image at the lower right corner of the screen, uh, showing that the sight line is currently quite obscured by the, the shrubs and the SO garage sign. Um, 
the the geometry that we've drawn out in the in the graphic here and and also the image at the top right confirm that the the real obstruction to the sight line is the shrubs they they used to be pruned down nice and low and, and that can be done again um so there is the our our um, engineering review has indicated that sight lines are appropriate to allow a, a right turn on red at this intersection. Um, we can carry on forward to some just to the next slide to some discussion about the cycling facilities. So at our first presentation to council, um, we were asked to uh, make to to seek opportunities to improve cycling facilities in the intersection. Uh, we, we're we proposing that that northbound cycle track on Beckwith Street will blend into traffic at the start of the right turn channel. There's the, that, that's to enable cyclists to join at a safe location where they can establish themselves in the lane, they, they can check for traffic entering the lane, and in the same way traffic entering the lane um, as they're checking at the, as they're, you know, checking their position as they move into the lane they would see any cyclists that are that are in that position it's a, it's safer to have the cyclists join there than closer to the intersection and then we have the the green surface treatment um, indicating the the location where cyclists should be as they come forward to the intersection where there's a bike box proposed if we can have the next slide Uh, I'll, I'll come back to that point about the right turn channel. Next slide. So the bike box um, commonly used uh, around the province. I, I believe this would be the first implementation in Smith Falls though. So the bike box simply allows cyclists to wait ahead of queuing traffic. There's no change to the, the traffic light sequence or anything like that. Uh, it just allows cyclists to, to move into position ahead of the traffic and then proceed ahead of the traffic so they can make their turn um, without having to um, worry about through traffic cutting cutting across them. Uh, the other point that was that just come up there was about the this free flow right. Uh, this is a kind of this is quite a different scenario to the 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 Elmsley Interbeck with free flow right that's proposed to be removed in this case. The geometry is very tight, and um, the only real solution here is to retain this lane. Traffic volumes using this are much lower, and traffic's moving more slowly because it's it's making the tight turn, and um, drivers have to check their their sight lines as they as they join Elmsley Street. So, this is a, a relatively safe situation for pedestrians already. Um, and on balance of maintaining um, the full operation of the intersection, the, the, the best solution here is to keep this, this free flow right turn. If we can have the next slide. Uh, this was just again highlighting the dashed pattern to give the visual indication to cyclists and motorists of the, the merging zone and, and the location where cyclists should be in the road. Uh, next slide. There was one last point here, which is, is further down the street, and I um, is is fairly clear cut. I think we're recommending the pedestrian a new pedestrian crossing on the south side of Church Street. Um, this is to provide a, a safe location for pedestrians to cross somewhere between Elmsley and um, and Russell, otherwise it's it's currently, I think, a fair, it's, well, it's essentially three blocks without a, a safe place for pedestrians to cross. Um, there had been some discussion with council about whether it would have been possible to put the PXO on the north side of the intersection uh, to provide sort of more direct access for the pedestrians who are heading to the Tim Hortons and Burger King over there. Um, and, uh, this this graphic is simply to indicate that the because of how close the entrance to the Tim Hortons Plaza is to Church Street, there is not enough length in that turning uh, 
median storage lane or not enough storage length in that turning lane. Um, and, and putting the PXO there would eat into that um, and would worsen the traffic congestion that we already see in that area with vehicles queuing to, to make that turn into the Tim Hortons. So we're not recommending what's shown in red, we're recommending what's shown in, in black. Um, next slide. So the next steps for the project are council approval of the design, um, finalizing the plans and specifications to get ready for tender, and then it's currently intended to go to construction between fall 2021 and, and fall 2022. Um, so the, the, the questions that were raised by council and, and the feedback that they were looking for was really in relation to um, the recommendation to close the right, the free flow right turn lane from um, from Elmsley into Beckwith, and I, I understood the council was looking to 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 have the feedback of this committee on whether this committee agrees with the 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 proposal to do that. Uh, thanks, Dave. We could probably turn off the slides now. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I apologize for my uh, tardiness. Um, I got caught up on some things and here I am. <laughs> but I did catch the presentation. Thank you, James. Um, so as James indicated, we are looking for direction or, or thoughts from this committee on a motion to accept the existing design with the elimination of the right turn. Uh, is there any other questions concerning the movement for trucks and such? As James had indicated that, that analysis was completed and they had looked at the longest size of trucks that could be uh, maneuvered around that corner safely without going into the northbound lane, that there's a right on red capability. There's a... Uh, a independent right turn only already placed in this in this design so as James had indicated the the free flow basically isn't a tight going around the corner it's just integrated within the intersection with the capability of, of still making those turns with doing this design then then the the big key is that the accessibility, we, we, we all have to make everything safer. We have to meet uh, standards for, for handicapped and accessibilities and, and ease for those peoples to, to navigate through these intersections. Hence, we, we're raising intersections. So we've got depressions. So there's not any step ups at sidewalks and such. Uh, so barriers are being removed by having the island. It, it's it's a barrier for for people to get across that portion, and and also it's not controlled. So there isn't a stop sign before you get to that. I know there's a yield uh, that you look for other traffic coming southbound from Beckwith North, but there's nothing that that um, tweaks people to, to think about the people that are waiting on the side of the road to be able to cross through that small section of roadway before they actually get to the intersection and have to wait on the island to then go through the main intersection. So, so has James addressed concerns relating to the movement of trucks in that area? Well, if I can speak as a truck driver, I can see it being a big problem because that is Highway 15 and there's a lot of trucks that, ha that may have to make that corner every day. And um, there's wide loads, long loads, because it, as I say, it is the King's Highway 15. So that's my issue with it. And uh, like to make it, the trucks, trailers are 53 feet now and 60 feet are coming. So to make, you know, to get around that corner, you're going, to be, you're going to be over into the northbound lane to make that corner. So 
That's my opinion. Okay. Um, Rick? Uh, good afternoon. I was just wondering, was there any um, study in terms of, of volume of traffic? I'm, I'm, I'm curious about, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the right turn lane and whether traffic is going to stack up significantly waiting for the red light. And I understand that uh, ideally having right turns on, on, on a red light will help uh, help that movement. But I'm just wondering, was there any, any study on the volume of traffic uh, as to whether or not traffic would be stacking back up Elmsley Street? Absolutely, and I can speak to that. Um, and maybe Dave, if you can pull the slides back up and go to um, slide 19, um, there's some additional data here that we can speak to. Um, while we wait for the slide to come up, um, the answer is that yes, we, we looked at traffic counts. Um, okay, here we go. So we looked at traffic counts. The, the table in the top left corner simply indicates what those, what those counts are. Um, the more interesting part of this is tables four, five, and six, which are the outputs from our modeling. So the the um, the right turn movement from Elmsley to Beckwith is the, the the line that's highlighted in green in each table. So the the eastbound right. Um, so table four is the existing intersection operations, and then the the three peak conditions are shown in the different styles of brackets. So the the AM peak, then the PM peak, and then the the midday peak. Right. Um, table five shows the the proposed condition with the eastbound free flow right turn channel removed, um, but right on red permitted. And then table six shows the same, but with right on red not permitted. So the numbers that you're looking for would be the, the Q length in the last column. So right now for this movement, we see a maximum Q length of um, 18 meters. And, and that's actually unchanged between table four and table five, the proposed okay. condition. And that's because um, the, the vehicles that are turning right, currently they still have to wait at the end of the free flow lane to merge at, at that yield sign that Vanessa mentioned, right? So if there's a car coming the other way, coming down from Beckwith North or turning in from um, Elmsley westbound, they're still gonna have to wait there. And, and it's essentially the same as the proposed condition where we have the dedicated right turn lane and you can make the right turn on red. Um, they're still gonna be able to proceed at the same, the same time, um, albeit slower because they have to make that momentary stop right. at the red light. Right. Table six shows what happens if you don't allow right turn on red and you see there that the, the Q length dramatically increases to 108 meters. Um, and, and that's why that condition's not proposed. The, the length of the dedicated right turn lane um, back on Elmsley Street is 40 meters. So anything, any queue within 40 meters doesn't obstruct, doesn't stack up and obstruct the through traffic. Anything more than 40 meters um, would obstruct that. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, Matt, is there anything that I sh I've missed here and I should add? Uh, no, that uh, that pretty much clears it for the for the traffic question. Okay, maybe uh, Rick, unless you had any follow up, I just wanted to address Ken's point about the the, the design for uh, turning trucks as well. No, go, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Matt, maybe you could just comment on the again on the truck, uh, the design of the the geometry to accommodate the trucks. Sure. Um, so I I understand that. Uh, the trucks are getting bigger, obviously, um, and with and with wide loads, and that it that it is the King's Highway, and so there is a lot of truck traffic. But with with our turning movements, we do take um, there's a safety factor involved in the actual um, AutoCAD design of it. So that's not exactly what the envelope will look like. It's actually larger than what it'll look like. Um, so with that safe factor of safety into it, we still don't impede on the. Um, on the northbound left turn, uh, left turn traffic. Yeah, so I, I think the the key point is that the the layout of that 
that uh, radius or that curb on the on um, for, for the trucks would follow turning from Elmsley into Beckwith. If, if we weren't trying to accommodate large trucks, we would have designed that radius to be much tighter um, to, to further shorten the crosswalks and improve safety for pedestrians. But the geometry has been laid out based on the, the design turning movement of the trucks at the appropriate design speed. Um, to ensure that trucks will be able to make that make that turn. So the, this whole design is a trade-off between the the pedestrians and accessibility improvements and cycling improvements versus obviously the need to maintain you know proper operation of this critical uh, highway. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Uh, Jay? Yeah, thanks. And thanks. A uh, long time to see you guys. Um, that last slide that you showed with the traffic counts, with the timing and everything, is that's the first time I've seen that. And it, forgive me if I've missed it, but that I would hope would be shared with council. Um, because that's one of my, that was one of my questions. And I'm, you know, I'm really happy that this group is, is talking about this and I'm I'm just here as basically observer. I don't vote, so uh, but I you know my role has been to uh, update council on the activities of the of the uh, traffic advisory committee and and that sort of thing. But I did have a couple of questions which I missed the other night, um, and and uh, I I did happen to watch uh, watch the meeting this morning about the uh, with the accessibility committee and and. And James, you mentioned uh, there are, um, and maybe you could reiterate, there are mitigation uh, steps you could take if you maintain the uh, the free flowing lane to increase pedestrian safety and and uh, and cycle safety. If it was maintained, there's something you there's things you could do. Yes, the type of steps you could take. Um... I mean, subject to Matt's design to accommodate trucks would be potentially widening sidewalks, narrowing the, the free flow lane, um, in, uh, adding adding signage to remind drivers, to reinforce that message to drivers that they do need to stop if there's a pedestrian waiting to cross the, the, the free flow lane, um, enlarging the islands, adding the, bringing the islands up to the current accessibility specifications so tactile walking surface indicators and appropriate size um, all, all within obviously the constraints of how much space is available um, but it it would still be inherently less safe because you don't have that direct path across the road um, the crosswalks would not be signal controlled and the other factors that Vanessa mentioned um, you're still looking for pedestrians to to cross to you know to to cross that free flow lane to the island, um, and then to navigate another crossing. Um, there was some discussion in the meeting this morning that you might have caught about whether or not lights could be implemented on the on the free flow lane. I mean, if we were to implement say signals there it's essentially the same as what's proposed because what's proposed is a, a dedicated right turn lane with signals, um, except that right now that the vehicles can go through with the proposed design, the vehicles can go through the red light. If you were to put a, a light on, a light to control the free flow lane, um, it would have to be a, you know, a hard red. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that. And just one more thing and then I'll, uh, I'm going to listen to everybody else, but and the uh, deputy chief is here do we know uh if if that's a problematic uh turn in terms of accidents or incidents in the past little while number of years i guess uh i mean i can i can only speak anecdotally on, on on my experience i don't uh i don't see it as being a, a collision um risk I, I don't recall any pedestrian incidents at that particular crossover on the on the free flow lane 
uh, nor do I rec uh, recall any, any collisions in terms of uh, vehicles merging uh, into one another. So I'm not aware of any, any problems uh, with regards to that, uh, to that particular uh, stretch of roadway. Thanks for that. And do you want to ad address uh, Joseph? Joseph? Thanks, Chair. Um, so uh, I don't live in Smith Falls, so I just want to make it clear that uh, my point of view is from the health unit and a population health perspective. So uh, I would just say that um, of the two options, we would offer our support for option two, uh, removing the free flow lane for a few reasons. Um, if the goal is to get more pedestrians downtown, going to businesses, um, there's evidence that shows that the perception of safety and a feeling of safety will attract more people and induce use. And, you know, so pedestrians and cyclists uh, do feel that way. Uh, generally, they're more likely to go to those areas. And there are several case studies um, that show that uh, people who take active transportation, like on their bikes or walking, um, over the long run, spend more money at, at local businesses uh, compared to people who arrive in, in personal motor vehicles. Um, so that can help the businesses downtown. And, and we know that um, income is a big determinant of health. Um, and then one other point is if um, people feel more comfortable, comfortable walking and biking downtown, um, this can improve the, the transportation modal share. So uh, decrease the number of car trips and increase the number of active transportation trips, uh, which have a couple different benefits, uh, getting people more active so that they, they you know, are more active just throughout their day um, and can decrease greenhouse gas emissions from cars, uh, which can help with, with town, the town's um, if they have any of those. So um, I think that's all I got. Thanks. Thank you. Herb? Um, I was just wondering about the traffic figures that you had um, and whether those traffic figures were taken during the last year and a half or from previous reports or where they came from. Because, you know, being in COVID, our numbers have not been as high with, as they would normally be. So when you look at delays, if you have more traffic, that's going to cause more delays. And I'm just wondering when the figures were put together. Absolutely. Um, I, I don't have all of the dates and numbers, but I can give you a, a general rundown and, and Matt may remember some of the numbers that I'm missing. Uh, the, the most recent available traffic count for this intersection was actually fairly old. I think it goes as far back as something like 2012. However, there were um, much more up-to-date counts available for other locations along Beckwith Street and I think Helmsley Street too, but, but predating uh, COVID. So counts from around uh, 2019 or, or the, I think counts from 2019, Matt, uh, I don't know if you know. Um, so what our, our traffic team had done was compare the the 2012 numbers and 2019 numbers for the intersections where both was available they found that there was a slight decrease in traffic volumes over that period um to to be conservative to be on the safe side we therefore we simply used the figures from the 2012 count so if anything, these are these should be slightly higher than the current traffic or the, the, the current traffic excluding COVID effects. Okay, thank you. Um, and I should mention there, sorry, I should just mention that the to answer Jay's point as well, there is a memorandum that we've prepared that goes with this. Um, and I'm sure that can be made available. Okay, as long as the trucks can make it around that corner, I have no problem with option two. Um, you've got to slow down at that free-flowing right-hand turn anyways, because you've got to look 
behind you to make sure traffic isn't coming and you've got to be aware of pedestrians trying to cross that intersection. So personally, I don't see that it's going to be that much of a, of a deal. Also with the traffic at Tim Hortons, as soon as you get around the corner, you've got to pretty well slow down um, because there's a lot of cars pulling into Tim Hortons. So that's just my personal perspective. And I'm just wondering, are we going to discuss the, uh, the cyclist component at a later time in this, in this uh, Zoom call or when do we want to do that? Um, Mr. Chair, I would suggest now would be a, a good time to have that discussion. Um, we, we're, we're at a point where we need to give uh, Morris and Hirschfield direction to complete the design. So, um, so that would be an appropriate one to have today. Okay, so I, I had some questions regarding that. When I looked at your design, um, it seems like the bicycle traffic or the cyclist traffic is going to merge with vehicles coming north on Beckwith Street. Um, is, it, is there going to be any kind of an issue between the cyclists and the cars doing that merge? Then it looked to me like that cycling lane went, if you were going north on Beckwith, but it's stuck with the right-hand lane, which is a going forward lane or turning right lane onto Elmsley East. So how are cyclists from that lane, if they want to turn left onto Elmsley, how are they going to get over? Is it up to them to just merge with traffic and hope no one hits them? Or are there other concerns there? So I have the two concerns. Do they merge from the bike lane in with traffic and it just goes smoothly? And then the other concern is if they want to turn left onto Elmsley, how do they get from the right-hand lane over to the left-hand lane? And is it all up to them to figure that out? Um, yeah, we can respond to those, those great points. Um, maybe Dave, if you can bring up the, the figure from the presentation that, that showed the cycling, the proposed cycling layout. And then Matt, maybe do you, do you want to address those? Yeah, yeah, I can uh, do my best to address those. Dave, if you, well, this is as good as any figure. Yeah, yeah, this works. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so in, in here we would have, we have appropriate uh, signage, which isn't shown on this, but it, it is um, led for cyclists to yield if there is oncoming or if there's, if there is a car coming and in into that through traffic lane, but based on the, um, the traffic counts again. Uh, we've the, the majority of traffic is making a left-hand turn there. They aren't going straight and they aren't turning right. So the uh, and also sorry, this is kind of jumbled up, but because of our our cycle lane with the uh, kind of the the ladder hatching, uh, we're taking up a little bit more of the lane. So it's 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 very much showing um, drivers that they have to be aware of uh, cyclists in the area because they don't have a full driving lane. So they will be driving kind of concurrently with a, uh, with a cyclist possibly. Um, and then as for the, uh, the left-hand turn. So um, Matt, Matt, just can I, yeah. There. So when you, did you say that it's up to the cyclist to decide whether they can merge with traffic at that point and there will be signage in indicating I don't know, stop or caution or something while merging with traffic. Is that what you're? Yeah, absolutely. There, there, there is, there will be signage for the cyclists just to be aware of, um, uh, to be aware what, that they are merging into active traffic at, the, at that point. Um, and also, I believe I've, we've also added signage for, um, for vehicles. Um, just so that they are aware that there is something. And, I, and I'm not 100% sure on that at this exact moment. 
uh, but I know that there is signage for the um, for the cyclists. And th this is a, I mean, it's it's a little bit of a uh, of a funky intersection, so it doesn't. Um, but we we do have similar things like this in Ottawa, where traffic or cyclists are kind of joining in to a uh, an also developing um, road or lane, I guess. Okay, thank you. No problem. And then for the uh, for the left hand turn lane. Um, obviously at a red light, the, the bike box creates that space where the cyclists can go from the right hand lane trip kind of, and then just park themselves in front of any left hand traffic to make that left hand turn. Um, so are they going to enter that box on the right hand side of the box and then they have to make their way to the left hand side of the box? Yeah. So that's what they would do at a, if there, if it was a red light. So how, how wide is, or not wide, but what's the depth of that box? Uh, I believe it is three meters. So let's say 10 feet. In 10 feet, they've got to make their way over to that. So if that's a red light, but if it's, if it's not a red light, how do they get over there? So if it's not a red light, then it would be, uh, I would assume very similar to how they operate now. If a cyclist is, let's say, dry, or biking down, um, biking down Beckwith or up Beckwith, they would then kind of merge as, as if they were a vehicle merging to the left side of the, uh, or I guess the right side of the left lane and then making that turn so that they are closer to the curb. Okay. I, I would add that that's, you know, that's the way a, a confident cyclist can use the road. Um, a, a less confident cyclist has the option to to wait at the curb until the light changes and then and then move across in the bike box. Yes, certainly from you know these have been fairly widely rolled out in in Ottawa where where we are and th they do you know I, I understand the concern that it's, it seems fairly short but when you're on a bike you're you're fairly mobile and you, you do have space to get across the bike box. Um, with these standard dimensions. And, and it just gives you those options of, of whether to ride with the traffic or whether to wait and then and then move across in the bike box. Okay. Um, one thing I would add here is that the, as, as we understand from town staff, the ultimate um, cycling arrangements on, on Elmsley Street are likely to be, if anything, bike lanes. So on-road bike lanes, not separated cycling facilities. And that was one of the, the, the reasons why we are electing to transition the cyclists into, into bike lanes or bike boxes, kind of on-road facilities, rather than constructing what we'd call a, a full protected intersection where there are, there are cross rides and um, completely separated facilities for cyclists to get across the road. I mean, there, there would be significant challenges doing that here anyway, because there's there's not enough space on the on the north side of Elmsley Street where the two gas stations are. You need you need a lot of space to put in those separate cross rides and um, and sidewalk facilities. But yeah, because because there's only ever likely to be on road bike lanes, it's it's more appropriate to have the cyclists come onto the road and, and use the bike boxes. Thank you. Luke, did you have anything else? Kenny? Um, I, I think Jack had his hand up. I'll have another question okay. later before we before we break. Okay, anyway, um, we all tend to be, I think, very uh, polite with a lot of our discussions here. But uh, I find myself, um, I always take Kenny's point of view and it, uh, he drives these streets far more often than, uh, than any of us do. And uh, so when he has a concern as far as that uh, turning lanes for the, uh, for the trucks, the fact that they are going to be in all probability getting uh, longer. And uh, anyway, that uh, free, free flow turn, I think is, uh, is rather important. And uh, one of the biggest concerns I have uh, for the last many years is the uh, turning lane or 
attorney procedures, let's say at uh, Burger King and at, uh, at Tim Hortons. Uh, when Rick LaBelle was asked as far as um, accidents up at uh, Beckwith and Elmsley, I cannot in my own uh, recall uh, remember seeing anything there. However, the situation at the Tim Hortons and also at Burger King there, um, you know, if an accident isn't recorded, the situations of having near misses, whatever, uh, you know, they are, you know, a, a great multitude uh, as compared to anything I've seen at uh, Beckwith and Elmsley. So that free flow turn, I think, is uh, is important. And, uh, you know, looking at all the different designs and that, uh, and thinking of Smith Falls, and I've driven here for years and years, uh, I have a lot of concerns about that. Thanks, Jack. I, I might, uh, sorry, if I, if I might add, and, and Irv, it is, this, is in, this is important to him as far as the bike lanes. I know we have them completed now. Um, you know, I'm still trying to sidestep bicycles on the sidewalk and they're going down the middle of the street or down the lanes. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to have a great uh, education thrust here to get people to, uh, to use these. And, uh, you know, as far as the use, you know, uh, it probably is there. I have seen them being used, uh, you know, to this point after the construction was completed but uh, not near to the extent that uh, not near to the extent that we uh, seem to be planning for here. I would agree with you, Jack. The education component, I think, is going to be very critical and not just for for the immediate downtown in phase one, but phase two also and how do you get around that corner and where do the bicyclists go and so on. Mm -hmm. Even from the standpoint the other day, uh, I was thinking People who are in cars and parked along Beck Beckwith Street right now, and they're in the passenger seat and they swing that door open. You're used to looking in the mirror on in the driver's section to see if there's a car coming or there's a bicyclist coming on, on that side. But for a passenger uh, in the car, they're not used to looking in the rear view mirror to see if there's a bicyclist coming. That could be a dangerous component there. Um, and I don't know how that's going to work out either, but We'll see. As, thanks, thanks, sir. Yes, sir. So, has the MTO approved any of this? Or, for me? Or have they got involved in any of this? Because it is Highway 15. And when that lane was put in there off of Elmsley Street, it was the MTO that made the town put it in there the years ago when they redeveloped uh, Elmsley Street with the new sewers and stuff. Again, I'm just going back to that. I think Vanessa had something. No, I, I can't answer to that one, but James, has was MTO circulated? Uh, we still need to get MTO's input on the, the final design. I My understanding is that MTO um, was aware of the, the proposal from the previous, uh, the previous was it the Beckwith Street revitalization Re Beckwith Street redevelopment plan to to close that right turn channel? Um, that's something we can discuss more. I, I mean, it would you... reiterate that the all the geometry and and everything else, the the layout of that turn is up to the the proposed design is up to current MTO standards for um, a, a road with the the large the large truck traffic. Uh, Jack. Mr. Chair, uh, what I can share is that uh, the ministry did review the, uh, the, uh, the concept plans, which included elimination of the free flow. And they also funded phase two through the connecting links program based on removal of the free flow lane. Vanessa, uh, did you have something? Um, no, I think, I think the, the talk concerns in relation to truck movement, um, the, the, the concerns for how we're getting pedestrians through that area, 
Um, it's just a reconfiguration of there's still a, a designated right turn lane. There's sufficient storage of 40 meters. Um, so I, I think that Morrison Hirschfield addressed um, the, the movement of vehicles and such through this area quite effectively. However, um, people's habits, it's hard to change. Uh, cycling, it's cycling month, um, just promoting cycling. And at that time period, doing some PE &E may be a good opportunity at this time to, to say we have the separated bike lanes and that, that we would put something out there is that don't forget to look over your right shoulder as well as your left uh, when you're exiting your vehicle. Um, the, the pathway is quite wide. So that, that was, I think, taken into consideration as well as the width of the parking spaces that are the parallel parking spaces. Um, is, there, is there any other questions or, or concerns? Um, I have a question not directly to do with that corner, but it kind of fits in. And that, that is the question regarding the gateway. Uh, several times within the last few days, I've gone around that corner and I've gone through straight through down Elmsley and looked at that corner where a gateway might be proposed. Uh, that's probably town land, so that makes it easy. But when traffic is stopped at um, coming north and it's stopped at the red light there, you can barely see that corner. The traffic just obscures the whole corner. There's also a small cenotaph there. I don't know what the cenotaph is for because uh, I didn't stop and walk in to take a look. Um, but that, like, it's very difficult to see that corner, both from a marketing standpoint of a gateway into town and um, from the standpoint of complexity at the corner. Coming around that corner, whether you're stopped on a red light or going through the free flow now, um, it's a complicated corner as it is to have a gateway structure there of some sort, whether it's even a simple sign or something, would just make it more confusing, more apt to have an accident there than if it was further down Elmsley Street towards the arena or whatever. I just think it would uh, cause more issues than, uh, than it would save for the town, but that's just, that's my perspective. Great. So, so if there's no other questions, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, if I could, if I could put a motion forward, and those members of um, of the committee can can provide a vote related to that motion. Are you okay with that, Mr. Chair? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, motion is that the traffic advisory committee support option two for a no free right design for the Elmsley Beckwith intersection. I I vote no. Oh, no for Ken. Okay. Irv. Uh, I, I'm fine with it. So yes. Joe. Yeah. And Jack. Uh I have to I have to agree with Ken. I have so I, I have uh, considerations here that uh, do not allow me to be positive on this, and so I'll vote no. Thank you. So those are our uh, we are at a fifty fifty. Thank you for your thank you for your votes. Can I ask how the uh, the other committee that the council asked to speak with how they viewed the corner from a disabled standpoint? I can uh, I can answer that, Mr. Chair. Um, so the Accessibility Advisory Committee supported the the recommendation uh, to remove the free flow right there. I think. Um, James, uh, do you recall? I think it was four to one or five to one? It was, yeah, there, there was one that voted yeah. against. I, 
I would point out there were two counselors that voted during that meeting. Right? Yeah. I'm sorry, Jay, you said there was two counselors that which? That were in the meeting that, that did vote. They did vote? Yeah. Did okay. So, so, um, so that point's well taken. Uh, we'll have to check the terms of reference, but I believe they are voting members uh, on that committee. And it, I, I checked actually when I joined uh, with Vanessa to, to uh, I'm not, it's similar to my role on the Heritage House Committee. I'm just, I'm a council rep who reports back to council uh, on the activities of the committee, as my understanding. Who were the two uh, council reps that uh, voted? So the, the two reps on the Accessibility Advisory Committee are uh, Councillor McGuire and Councillor Allen. Sorry, I got lost there. It's fine. Okay, okay well, I, I think that's a very, very helpful discussion. Um, some really good points were raised. Uh, a few concerns were raised that... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll need to take into consideration when we consider the final design. Um, and this will certainly help council render a decision uh, so that we can move the, uh, the final design forward and, uh, and keep on schedule. So uh, th thank you all for, for your input. This was very helpful. Great. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Okay, thanks. Thanks, James and Matt. Thanks. Appreciate the presentation. Thanks. Thank you for your presentation.